Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at some of the changes that have taken place in Server 5.4 uh, because Apple has changed a number of things. They've removed some services. And this week specifically we're going to talk about the WebDev uh, service that was removed or uh, seemingly removed and changed by Apple. So Apple did make a shift. Uh, previously they had an iOS shares option where you could share files or folders with iOS devices uh, over WebDAV. And so it was, it was nice to be able to get access to your files inside uh, the actual applications on your iOS devices. But Apple removed those in this uh, latest edition of Server, and they moved the WebDAV service to the command line, which makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to get access to and not quite as accessible. So not exactly sure why they did that, but uh, thought I would do a screencast to walk you through that so that you could figure out how to get it working again. Now, one of the things I did is I did pour through all of the different files because mine didn't work, and uh, I'm not sure if this has happened to you, but when I did the upgrade, I couldn't connect to those shares anymore and had all kinds of problems. Um, I tried going through the files. I tried figuring out what was wrong. I, I looked at ports. I looked at configuration files and just couldn't get it happening. So I, did, I also did a clean install on another Mac that I had around just to see if that was part of the problem, and I had the same issues where I could, uh, where it could see the WebDAV share in terms of it would give me a certificate page page that said, hey, you got to try, you know, it's an untrusted certificate. Do you want to trust it? I'd say yes. And then it would just kind of hang and never load. And then it would say it couldn't get access to the server, almost like it wasn't uh, allowing access. Um, so I figured out how to get this to work, at least for me. And so I, hopefully this will help you as well. Now, one of the things you want to make sure that you do first as we get started here is number one, you want to make sure that you at least have port 443 open. Uh, because that is the port over which uh, secure web dev sharing goes. And so you want to make sure that's open on your router. Uh, in order, and also, in addition to that, you want to make sure that you've got the website service turned on here, as well as the wiki service. And if I just go to the wiki service, this was the really important part. Uh, make sure that you've got this box, Enable Web Dev Access to Wiki Files, checked. Uh, once I enabled the wiki service and had that box checked, then all of a sudden everything started working for me. And so I just want to give you that ahead of time because it was a little thing that I didn't consider. And once I did it, all of a sudden it worked. So... Uh, that might work for you as well. So I just wanted to show you that that was there. Uh, so anyway, now one of the things with the web dev service, like I said, is it works through the command line. So let me just show you how that works. Okay, so here I am over on the command line. And so I'm just in a uh, terminal window here. And so what we're going to do is we use something that's called the web dev file sharing control utility. And that's something that Apple has put in there that allows us to configure our web dev sh uh, shares. And so, like I said, shout out to uh, Charles Edge uh, over at Crypted.com, who uh, basically gave an outline of how this works. It, uh, again, it was one of the first things out there, and so it's a huge help to have uh, people just kind of publishing those things. And so thanks a lot, Charles. So let me just show you how this works. Uh, so what we're going to do is it happens with sudo. Okay, so it's going to happen with root, and we type sudo. And then it's WFSCTL, and that's what's short for that web dev file sharing control utility. And then we're going to put a space, and to start the service, you just type start. And then you hit enter, put in your password. And so as I'm doing that, it's not going to show that I'm typing it in there. It's just how uh, terminal works. I hit enter, and it's going to check for available server names. It's going to start the service. Now, mine's already running, uh, so it's going to show what's there. It's going to show all that information. I get this error that comes back. I think it's because I've already got it started and running. Uh, but uh, mine works anyway, so just wanted to let you know that. But that's how you would do it. It would show you your host names and the, and the host names that it's available at. So you can see I've got my do domain name there. I've got uh, the local server and local host, and those are the available names. And so that's how that works. Uh, it just says that this particular one with the capital uh, capital letters there isn't available, so it's just finding that as an error. That's not a problem. It's still working for me. So once I've got that done, then I can set up the shares that I want to set up. And again, everything goes through the command line again to set up those shares. So again, I would just go sudo, and I would say WFSCTL, and then what I would do is I would go in and put my share. And so what I need to do is put share, and then I've got to go whatever the, the path is for that share. So for instance, let me just pull up a finder window here. Let's just say I want to share my downloads folder. Down here is where I'd see the path. So it'd be users, Mac uh, server there, downloads. And that's what I would do to put that share in there. So let's just go ahead and put this down. 
And we're just going to type that in here. So I'm going to say users, and I want to type it just like I see it there. So users, uh, max server, and then downloads. And so I'm just going to hit enter there. And so no existing SharePoint. And so it created the SharePoint for me. So now that's a share. So that's available to share. If I ever want to unshare something, I just do that in reverse. So it would just, it would look like this. I'd say WFSCTL, and I'd say unshare, and then put the same things in there. And downloads. Put that in there, and then you can see the SharePoint is not uh, shared either way. No other shares, deleting the SharePoint, and now it's deleted it and it's disappeared, and so now it's not available. So that's how you would share and unshare. You would do that right here from the command line. Now, if you ever have problems where you don't know what's going wrong, maybe the, the SharePoint isn't working and you want to diagnose it, uh, you would just do the same thing. You do sudo wfsctl, and then you just type diagnose. And so what this is going to do is diagnose my share. And so it goes through a whole process of seeing if it's mapped and everything's ready to go. And you can see uh, if I just scroll up to the top here, um, what it's going to do is give me information on the share. It'll show what the settings are in the P list. It'll say what my SharePoint name is and whether it's shared. You can see, yes, it's shared with WebDAV there. Uh, you can see that it uh, looks at the different servers, different ports, whether they're responding or not. And then it says a currently available uh, valid servers uh, just based on my local IP addresses that it runs through. It's got my current valid server names uh, that I can use to access it. And then it goes through the different ports and such. Now, one of the things that I saw is it'll say things like it's not responding on port 80 or 443 and that it's using a non-standard port 81. Uh, what I found was I tried to fix that or figure that out earlier, but that wasn't something I needed to do. I just needed to throw uh, that uh, wiki service on, and it took care of it for me because it works with proxies and all of that sort of thing. So um, I just left that alone, and everything was fine. And you can see it gives me all the different processes that are there for Apache. And so now um, that's how you would diagnose it. So if there are any problems, you would check it out that way. Um, but that gives you an idea of how all of that works in inside of the terminal. Uh, if you wanted to look at the manual, uh, as some people have, have asked, I think it just goes sudo wfsctl uh, man. And so basically what it does is it shows you the different usage things for the file sharing control utility. And so it'll show you the different things. You can start, stop, status, shares, um, and then you can unshare with the path or diagnose. It kind of shows you what the usage is there uh, for the control utility. So we've got another one there where we can stop the service if we want, or we can do the status. And so let's just do that just so we can see it. So we'll go sudo wfsctl, and we'll go status. And so then it'll tell us that the status is enabled so that we know the service is on. So that gives you a walkthrough of the command line utilities. Now let's take a look at what it looks like to connect to that just to test it to see if it will work uh, internally and externally. Again, you want to make sure you open the ports on your router uh, for that to happen so that you can get access to it. Again, ports 443. You could also open port 80 if you wanted to, although it probably was doesn't work through there. But 443 is the big one because we're using uh, SSL for the connection. So let me go over to my iPhone and I'll put that on here and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here I am over in the files application that comes with iOS 11. And so you can see I've got different locations there like iCloud Drive and such. And you can see I've got applications like Transmit and Documents uh, here that will also access my WebDAV shares. And so in order to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and tap on Transmit. And so it takes me into the Transmit application here. Now what I'm going to do is just, uh, you can see it's got remote on the bottom. I'm going to tap on the Quick Connect right here. And so I have options inside of Transmit to choose how I want to connect. And you can see I've got WebDAV there via HTTPS. And so that's what you want to use. So I'm just going to tap back. You can see I've got that there. Then I just need to put in my server address, which would be my fully qualified uh, domain name. And so let me just go ahead and put that in there. And I don't have to put a lot of extra stuff in here in Transmit. Sometimes it asks you to put the HTTPS with the colons and all that. Uh, in fact, I'll just type it out that way. So HTTPS. Uh, with uh, the colons there, with the two slashes, and then you put in your server's address. And once you have that in there, then it's going to be a slash with WebDAV. 
just like that. Now, transmit's just going to uh, lower it. When I come down to username, it'll just put in whatever the fully qualified domain name is because it's already got that set in its settings. In here, you're going to put your username and your password, and I usually use the short name here. So let me go ahead and put that in. Okay, once I have all of that information in there, all I need to do is tap on connect up above. So it's going to tell me that uh, I can't identify the server because I've got a self-signed certificate. I'm just going to tap on continue to let that go. And so now what it's going to do is connect to my uh, share. And you can see there's my documents folder, which is something that I shared before. If I just tap on the documents folder, you see I put the uh, P lists and config files in there because I was playing with those earlier, but that's what I have inside of there. And you can see that my share now is, uh, is fully intact and I can go right back in and take a look at it that way. So that's one way that I can go ahead and connect to my shares. Again, I can do that through other applications as well, such as Documents by Readle. Uh, that also has uh, the option to connect. But this gives you a, an idea of how this works. I did test this remotely as well. My screen sharing software won't let me show uh, the remote connection because I've got to have a local connection for it to work, but it does work remotely for me as well. And so this is a great way to be able to have your files handy and accessible uh, via your iOS devices. So hopefully that helps clear up how to use the WebDAV service. I know that's created a lot of confusion uh, for many people, myself included. And uh, this was kind of a little bit of my journey to get this working and up and running. So hopefully that helps you as well. Uh, if you liked uh, the content I've got here on these videos, uh, please subscribe. That will help you know when the next videos are coming out. And it really helps me to, uh, to, to stay motivated and keep going because I know I'm putting these things together for you guys. And it, and it, uh, it brings me a lot of joy to know that it helps you out. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.